अभिषेक मुखोपाध्याय विद मिड डे न्यूज द हेडलाइंस लोकसभा एडजर्न टिल टू पी एम ऑन द सेकेंड डे ऑफ द मॉनसून सेशन ओवर वेरियस इश्यूज इंक्लूडिंग स्नूपिंग राज्यसभा टेक्स अप डिस्कशन ऑन कोविड सिचुएशन इन द कंट्री Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges BJP MPs to counter the misinformation spread by the opposition about COVID-19 situation in the country. Government reiterates it is always open to discussion with farmers union and agitating farmers to resolve the issue. More than 41 crore 18 lakh COVID vaccine doses administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. National COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 97.37%. Over 30,000 new cases reported in last 24 hours, lowest in 125 days. Supreme Court asks Kerala government to adhere to the guidelines for observance of Eid al-Adha festival. Bahuda Yatra of Lord Jagannath is being celebrated in Puri amid COVID restrictions. And in cricket, Second ODI between India and Sri Lanka to be played in Colombo at 3 p.m. today. As the nationwide free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is going on, we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and also to help others to get vaccinated. We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki doori for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID related information and guidance, contact National Helpline numbers 0112397 and 1075. And now the news in detail. Both the Houses of Parliament witnessed stormy scenes on the second consecutive day of the monsoon session today over various issues including Pegasus snooping. The Lok Sabha has been adjourned till 2 p.m. while the Rajya Sabha also faced repeated adjournments. When the Lok Sabha met this morning, members from Congress, TMC, DMK and others trooped into the well, raising the issue related to alleged snooping of political leaders and others. The opposition members had given adjournment motions on the alleged snooping and other issues. YSR Congress members were also on their feet against the privatization of Vishakhapatnam steel plant. As the noisy scenes continued, Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla adjourned the House till 2 p.m. In the Rajya Sabha, when the House met after the second adjournment at 1 p.m., YSR Congress members trooped into the well, demanding special status for Andhra Pradesh. Leader of the House Piyush Goyal urged the agitating members to allow the House to take up discussion on COVID-19 pandemic saying it is an important issue which has affected the entire world. I would like to appeal to you to allow the House to discuss this very important subject that's affecting the whole world today. All of India is watching this debate on COVID and my request is that you may kindly help us to discuss this important matter participate in this debate tell us about how andhra pradesh also faced this and tackled this covid and let us have this in a very positive and friendly manner this debate in the interest of the nation amid noisy scenes the house took up discussion on covid-19 situation participating in the discussion leader of opposition malikarjun kharge lauded the efforts of covid warriors including doctors and healthcare workers Mr Kharge highlighted the plight of the people during the pandemic he also criticized the government for mishandling the situation earlier while initiating the discussion swapan das gupta of bjp lauded the government's welfare measures including free ration to people he also talked about massive vaccination drive against covid saying country's economy is resilient mr das gupta said it has helped in tackling the pandemic challenges Prime Minister Narendra Modi today told the members of parliament of the Bharatiya Janata Party BJP to counter the lies being spread by the opposition about the coronavirus disease situation in the country. He was speaking at the BJP parliamentary party meeting. Mr Modi also asked the BJP MPs to defeat the Congress lies 
with truth and make people aware about the government's work. Speaking to reporters after the parliamentary party meeting, BJP leader Prahlad Joshi informed this to the media persons. प्रधान मंत्री जी विपक्ष के जो स्टैंड है उसके बारे में बहुत चिंता व्यक्त की सरकार और प्रधान मंत्री जी चाहते हैं कि चर्चा समृद्ध हो चर्चा सार्थक हो इसलिए चर्चा में भाग लेना चाहिए बहुत बड़ा महामारी लगभग दो साल से हम झेल रहे हैं लेकिन मोस्ट इनरिस्पॉन्सिबल बिहेवियर स्पेशली कांग्रेस पार्टी कर रहे हैं माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी हमारे सभी एमपीओ को आग्रह किया है वैक्सीनेशन का प्रोग्राम है और गरीब कल्याण योजना है ये सभी गरीब तक पहुंचना चाहिए इसके लिए भी हमको प्रयास करना चाहिए ये कॉल माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने किया है Parliament Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi to the said that there is no iota of link between the government and the Pegasus issue Speaking to reporters Mr Joshi said still if the opposition wants to raise the issue through proper procedure let them raise it Mr Joshi also said the IT minister has already issued a statement on the issue yesterday in the Lok Sabha The Union government today reiterated that it is always open to discussion with farmers union and will remain open to discussion with agitating farmers to resolve the issue Minister of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Narendra Singh Tomar in a written reply to the Lok Sabha said So far 11 rounds of negotiations were held between the government and the agitating farmers unions to resolve the issues. He said the government has been engaged in serious sensitive and active discussions with the farmers unions to resolve the issues. Mr Tomar highlighted that the government has also extended remunerative prize to farmers through its various intervention schemes. The minister said in all rounds of discussions with the farmers unions Government has stressed that instead of insisting on the demand for the repeal of the said acts the farmer unions should discuss about the concerns of the clause of farm acts so that the concerns can be resolved The union government today said that the timeline given to all states and union territories for linking the aadhar numbers of beneficiaries with their ration cards has been extended up to the 30th of September this year In a written reply to the Lok Sabha, Minister of State for Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti, said so far at the national level about 92.8% ration cards have been seeded with Aadhaar. She said 28 states and UTs have completed the Aadhaar seeding of respective ration cards. The Congress today demanded a judicial probe into the Pegasus issue. Speaking to reporters outside the Parliament, Gaurav Gogoi said that the government's response has been disappointing. He said instead of ordering a probe under judicial oversight, the government is defending the NSO group. He said press and judiciary are being snooped. More than 41 crore 18 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. Union Health Ministry said more than 52 lakh 67 thousand vaccine doses were administered in the last 24 hours. The recovery rate has gone up to 97.37 percent. More than 45 thousand patients recovered in the last 24 hours. Till now, more than 3 crore 3 lakh people have recovered from COVID-19. India reported 30 thousand new cases in the last 24 hours, which is the lowest in 125 days. In all, 374 deaths have been reported in the last 24 hours. Till now more than 4 lakh 14 thousand people have lost their lives due to the pandemic. Union Health Ministry has said that more than 42 crore 15 lakh covid vaccine doses have been provided to states and UTs so far. It said a further 71 lakh 40 thousand doses are in the pipeline. The total consumption including wastages is more than 40 crore 3 lakh 50 thousand doses. In view of the COVID-19 situation, the West Bengal government has now made it mandatory for all inbound flight passengers from other states to show a certificate of two doses of vaccination or RT-PCR negative report. The new norm comes into effect from today. The RT-PCR test has to be done within 72 hours prior to departure. Earlier, the rule was applicable to five states with high COVID-19 infection rate. In Gujarat the recovery rate of COVID-19 stands at 98.72%. The state health department said 70 to 74 patients were discharged yesterday taking the total number of recovered cases in the state to 813998. The state reported 24 new cases in the last 24 hours. There are 443 active cases in Gujarat out of which 6 patients are in critical condition. 
On the other hand, as many as 3,92,953 people were vaccinated against COVID-19 yesterday, taking the number of doses administered so far in the state to 2 crore 97 lakh 34,497. The Department of Pre-University Education in Karnataka has announced that the Class 12th results for the freshers and repeaters will be announced in the evening today on carresults.nic.in web portal. Due to the pandemic, examinations were not conducted and it, it was decided to promote all the students based on the marks obtained in the previous exams. The total marks will be calculated by considering 45% weightage from class 10th, 45% from class 11th results and 10% from the internal assessment marks in class 12th. The Department of Pre-University had generated registration numbers and was given to the students. Based on these, the results could be obtained from the portal. In Madhya Pradesh, classes of Standard 11th and 12th in schools and hostels will begin from the 26th of July while ensuring strict adherence to COVID-appropriate behaviour. Classes of Standard 9th and 10th will begin from 5th of August. More from a correspondent. All schools will open with 50% attendance. Students will be able to come to school for two days in a week in the month of July and four days a week in the month of August. Crisis management groups will be able to decide on the opening of classes according to local conditions. Coaching centers for class 12th will open with 50% capacity from August 5th, while the new academic session will start from September 1st in the colleges of the state. The consent of parents would be essential for sending students to classes in schools and colleges. Pooja P. Vardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. The Supreme Court today asked Kerala government to adhere to the same guidelines as laid down by the court for the Kavar Yatra in the wake of the Kerala government's decision to relax COVID-19 restrictions for the Eid ul al Adha festival. A bench comprising of Justices R.F. Nariman and B.R. Gavai directed the state to pay heed to Article 21 and its order in the Kavar Yatra case. Last Friday, the court had cited the fundamental right to life to order the Uttar Pradesh government to stop the annual Kavar Yatra. The court was responding to a plea against Kerala government's move to ease lockdown restrictions ahead of Eid al-Adha, Bakrid, at a time when the state is dealing with an alarming surge in COVID-19 cases. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Lok Sabha adjourned till 2 p.m. on the second day of the monsoon session over various issues, including soup snooping. Rajya Sabha takes up discussion on COVID situation in the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges BJP MPs to counter the misinformation spread by the opposition about COVID-19 situation in the country. Government reiterates it is always open to discussion with farmers' union and agitating farmers to resolve the issue. More than 41 crore 18 lakh COVID vaccine doses administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. National COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 97.37%, over 30,000 new cases reported in the last 24 hours, lowest in 125 days. Supreme Court asked Kerala government to adhere to the guidelines observance of Eid al-Adha festival. Bahuda Yatra of Lord Jagannath has been celebrated in Puri amid COVID restrictions and in cricket, a second ODI between India and Sri Lanka to be played in Colombo at 3 p.m. today. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Center is disseminating awareness of national helpline numbers for the benefit of citizens during the COVID-19 pandemic. The helpline number of the Health and Family Welfare Ministry is 1075. The Child Helpline number is 1098. For senior citizens of Delhi, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, the helpline number is 14567. 
The helpline number of the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Nimhans for Psychological Support, is 080-4611-0007. The Ayush COVID-19 Counseling Helpline number is 1443. And MyGov WhatsApp Help Desk number is 9013151515. Welcome back to the Midday News on All India Radio. Foreign Secretary Harsh Vardhan Shringla today said the COVID-19 pandemic has not only generated severe economic stresses, but would have a long-term impact on the geopolitical situation. He said the growing convergence of the India and Japan on strategic and economic issues has the potential to shape a multipolar world that is more peaceful, secure and sustainable. In his opening remarks at the opening session of the India-Japan Forum, Mr. Shringla said there are new opportunities for enhanced cooperation as both India and Japan work towards dealing with the impact of the pandemic. News Justin Lok Sabha has been adjourned till 3 p.m. over uproar by opposition on various issues. In Odisha, the Return Car Festival in Puri is being celebrated today. The festival marks the return of Lord Jagannath and his siblings to Sri Jagannath Temple from the Sri Gundicha Temple after a brief sojourn. It is also known as Bahuda Yatra. The deities began their homecoming to Sri Mandir on the ninth day of the Ratha Yatra that was observed on the 12th of this month. Soon after the rituals like Chira Pahara were over, the deities were also on to their respective Rath. As was done in the Ratha Yatra, in the Bahura Yatra too, the Raths are being pulled by the Sebayats or the servitors of the deities. However, due to COVID-19, curfew has been imposed in and around the Bharadanda where the Raths are rolling towards the Sri Jagannath Temple. As in the previous year, this time too, the general devotees have been barred from taking part in in the festival due to the pandemic, though the entire proceeding are being telecast live. Girish Chandra Das, AIR News, Bhavaneshwar. Maharashtra Chief Minister Udav Thakre performed the annual official Mahapuja of Lord Vittal in Pandarpur Temple on the occasion of Ashadi Ekadashi, along with wife Rashmi at 2.15 a.m. today. The devotees from Vardar district, Keshav Kolte and his wife Indubai, were chosen to participate in the Mahapuja along with the Chief Minister. More from a correspondent. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre said that he wishes to see the temple full of devotees very soon as it used to be before the corona pandemic. Chief Minister had arrived in Pandharpur last night to perform the official Mahapuja of Lord Vittal on the occasion of Ashadi Ekadashi today. Ashadi Ekadashi is one of the most important festivals in Maharashtra and a pilgrimage called Wari is culminated in Pandharpur and various palkis which carry the padukas of various saints across the state reach the temple on the occasion of Ashadi Ekadashi. Thousands of devotees know as Varkari used to walk hundreds of miles to take darshan of Lord Vithal every year. But due to the ongoing crisis of Corona pandemic, the Maharashtra government did not allow the pilgrimage on foot for the second consecutive year. Prestigious 10 palkis were brought by the special Shiva Shahi buses of MSRTC to Pandharpur. Only 40 devotees were allowed with each of the palkis and after reaching Pandharpur, the devotees with each of the palki were allowed to walk with the palki for some distance to mark the customary wari. The Pandharpur temple is fully decorated decorated with flowers and attractive lighting, but curfew has been imposed in Pandharpur and nearby villages to avoid crowding of devotees in view of global pandemic. Shailesh Patil, AIR News, Mumbai. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has greeted people on the occasion of Ashadi Ekadashi. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said, On a special day, we pray to Lord Vittal to bless us with abundance of happiness and good health. He said, The Varkari movement represents the finest of our traditions and emphasizes on harmony and equality. Shripad Yesunayak today took charge as the Union Minister of State for Tourism, Ports, Shipping and Waterways. Mr. Nayak expressed gratitude to Prime Minister Narendra Modi for entrusting him the responsibility. The elevation of Navjot Singh Sidhu as the President of Punjab Pradesh Congress Committee has not ended the political turmoil in the state unit. It seems all is not well and Punjab Congress has been divided into two camps in the state. While Sidhu continued the process of meeting ministers, legislators and Congress leaders, Captain Amrinder Singh yesterday had a meeting with Assembly Speaker Rana K.P. Singh, former PPCC President Lal Singh, Ministers Brahma Mahindra, Balbir Singh Sidhu, Sadhu Singh Dharmsoth and few MLAs at his official residence. 
In Bihar, there is no let up in the flood situation in the state. Ten districts, including West Champaran, Darbhanga, Muzaffarpur, and Shibhar, are in the grip of flood. Twelve teams of NDRF and SDRF are carrying out relief and rescue operations in the affected areas. Maroon people are shifting to higher and safer places. Canada has extended the ban on passenger flights from India till 21st of August. Canadian Transport Minister Omar Al Gabra, during a news conference, said that the decision is based on the advice received from the Public Health Agency of Canada and will best protect Canadians from an increased introduction of the Delta variant. This is All India Radio giving you the news. Dunya Rang Birangi Khatya Miti Rasili Samacharunka Satrangi Khazana Akashwani Par Khabre Hongi Hatkar Janengi Kuch Alag Hasengi Khulkar Karengi Sajag सुनना न भूलें सोमवार और मंगलवार आज सवेरे तथा शनिवार और रविवार कार्यक्रम परिक्रमा में With four days to go for Tokyo Olympics, AIR today takes a look at Apurvi Chandela's shooting career, one of the survivors of Rio 2016, and whether she can use her previous experiences to get a medal at Tokyo. A report from our sports desk. Born on 4 January 1993 in Jaipur, Apurvi will be one of the four Indian shooters with prior Olympic experience going into Tokyo 2020. She belongs to that generation of Indian shooters who decided to join the sport after witnessing Abhinav Bindra's gold-winning run in Beijing 2008. After the retirement of Anjali Bhagwat and Suma Shirur, the women's 10-meter air rifle scene in India witnessed a lull, which was evident at the 2012 London Olympics when no female rifle shooter from India qualified. All this was to change at the 2014 Commonwealth Games with 21-year-old Apurvi winning the gold. India had a 1-2 finish in women's 10-meter air rifle at Glasgow. Apurvi would go on to win a bronze at the Changwon World Cup in 2015. But her best moment during that Olympic cycle was a silver in the 2015 World Cup final. Her performance, however, in Rio was disastrous, much like the rest of the Indian shooting contingent. In 2018, ISSF changed the format of women's air rifle to make it comparable to the men's event. Women would now fire 60 shots instead of 40 in qualification and 24 instead of 20 in finals. This worked to the advantage of Apurvi and other Indian shooters. The year 2019 was the best year of 7-year-old Apurvi's career. She posted a new women's final world record of 252.9 en route to winning gold at Delhi 2019 and followed it up with another gold at Munich. She got a gold-silver at two ISSF World Cups in mixed team with Deepa Kumar and a silver in 2019 World Cup final paired with a Chinese shooter. Listeners from across the country are participating in the Olympic quiz with EIR News. Class 5th student Prabhu Ashish Patnaik of Bhubaneswar in Odisha was the first one to send the correct answer to the question of 18th July. To participate in the Olympic quiz, tune in to our program Sports Scan at 7.20 p.m. every day. In the run-up to the Tokyo Olympics, the new services division of All India Radio in its Sports Scan program is broadcasting every day Olympics quiz with AIR News. Olympics quiz, Akashwani Samachar ke saath in Hindi. Every day, a question related to Olympics will be asked at the beginning and closing of the program. To participate in this program, listeners can send the replies by email on airsportscan at gmail.com. The first correct answer received through email will be adjudged the winner of the quiz. The name of the winner will be announced in SportsCan program the next day. It will also be flashed on AIR Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. 
the Sports Authority of India will provide India team jersey to the winner. So tune in to the Sports Scan program every day at 7:20 p.m. on FM Gold and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. The Assam Assembly has adopted a unanimous resolution today, wishing best of luck to pugilist Lovlina Borgohain in the Tokyo Olympics. Moving the resolution, Legislative Affairs Minister Piyush Hazarika said that Ms. Borgohain has already made Assam proud by qualifying for the Olympics. He also mentioned that both her elder twin sisters are national-level boxers themselves. Mr. Hazarika further said a bicycle rally will be taken out in Guwahati tomorrow to cheer for Lovlina. which will be flagged off by chief minister himanta biswa sharma in cricket the second odi between india and sri lanka will be played today at the r premadasa stadium in colombo today the match will begin at 3 pm india won the first odi on sunday by 7 wickets the third and final odi will be played on the 23rd of this month both the teams are also scheduled to play three 2020 matches starting from the 25th of july The Sensex and the Nifty today fell around half a percent in the afternoon trade. Both stocks declined in sync with fall in the other Asian equity markets. The Sensex fell below 52,400 while the Nifty slipped below 15,700 level. The BSE Sensex plunged 229 points or 0.44% to trade at 52,324. The NSE Nifty also declined 85 points or 0.54% to trade at 15,000 1668 in the forex market the rupee appreciated 12 paise against the us currency to trade at 74 rupees and 76 paise per dollar today is moon landing day the day marks the 52nd anniversary of the event when man first walked on the moon on 20th july 1969 and we're getting a picture on the tv okay. got a good picture huh? Uh, there's a great deal of contrast in it, and uh, currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out uh, a fair amount of detail. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Yeah, I'm going to step off the lamp now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. How is the quality of the TV? Oh, it's beautiful. Now let us take a look at the weather update for today. The national capital Delhi is likely to experience a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Mumbai is expected to have generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. Chennai is likely to witness a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Kolkata may witness a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Srinagar is expected to experience generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Jammu may see generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Leh is likely to have a generally cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Gilgit might experience generally cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm. Muzaffarabad is likely to witness thunderstorm with rain. Most of the northeastern cities including Imphal, Shillong, Aizol, Kohima and Itanagar may experience a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. In Guwahati the lower limit of temperature was 27 degrees Celsius while upper limit will be 34 degrees. In Imphal the temperature will hover between 21 degrees Celsius and 29 degrees in the city. And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again. Lok Sabha adjourned till 3 p.m. on the second day of the monsoon session over various issues including snooping. Rajya Sabha takes up discussion on COVID situation in the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urges BJP MPs to counter the misinformation spread by the opposition about COVID-19 situation in the country. Government reiterates it is always open to discussion with farmers union and educating farmers to resolve the issue. More than 41 crore 18 lakh covid vaccine doses administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. National covid-19 recovery rate improves to 97.37%. Over 30,000 new cases reported in last 24 hours, lowest in 125 days. Supreme Court asks Kerala government to adhere to the guidelines for observance of Eid al-Adha festival. Bahuda Yatra of Lord Jagannath is being celebrated in Puri amid covid restrictions and in cricket second ODI between India and Sri Lanka to be played in Colombo at 3 pm today and with that we end the midday news
नमस्कार दोपहर समाचार में